Hey everyone, today I'm diving into a fascinating world where technology meets sustainability. We're talking about high temperature electrolysis and how ANSYS Fluent is a game changer in this field. First off, what is high temperature electrolysis, you might ask? It's essentially the reverse of a fuel cell. Instead of generating electricity, we use electricity to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. Pretty cool, right? This is crucial for creating cleaner energy sources. Now let's get technical. The magic begins with designing a 3D model using Design Modeler software. The focus? A fuel cell's internal space. Imagine sculpting the tiny world where all our reactions happen. Next up, meshing this model. And no, we're not talking about fishing nets here. In ANSYS meshing software, we create an unstructured mesh with over 2.3 million cells. This detailed mesh is key to accurately simulating our electrolysis process. So, we've got our model ready. It's time to simulate. Using ANSYS Fluent, we deploy the fuel cell and electrolysis model with an additional electrolysis submodel. These tools help us mimic real-life chemical reactions at the electrodes, the anode and cathode. Here we see water vapor turning into hydrogen and oxygen, thanks to the electricity we feed into the system. And it gets even more interesting. With the species transport model activated, we can track how hydrogen, oxygen and water vapor move and react within the cell. This is crucial for optimizing our electrolysis process. After running the simulation, we analyze the results. We look at various contours like electric potential and protonic potential, which tell us how effectively our electrolyzer is functioning. We also examine the mass fractions of H2, O2, and H2O to ensure everything is converting correctly. What does all this mean? Through simulations like this, ANSYS Fluent helps us understand and improve high temperature electrolysis. This isn't just academic, it's about pushing forward to a future where our energy is more sustainable and our environmental footprint is smaller. So, whether you're an engineering student or just a curious mind, the power of simulation in advancing clean energy tech is undeniable. Thanks for tuning in and keep questioning, keep exploring. See you next time. In the solver section, we select the pressure-based option. We assume that in our simulation, we have incompressible flow. We have three K epsilon turbulence models. We select the realizable K epsilon model. The ref current density is equivalent to the reference exchange current density per active surface area. In other words, there is a relation to compute the exchange current density on the anode and cathode sides. The JREF parameters are equivalent to the reference exchange current density on the anode and cathode sides. As you can see, in the subsection of the cathode zone type section, the different layers of the electrolyzer are displayed. We must select each option of these layers to determine the related zone through the computational domain of the electrolyzer. Then, in the zone box that appears, we select the zone corresponding to the cathode flow channel from the computational domain. Then, in the zone box that appears, we select the zone corresponding to the cathode flow channel from the computational domain. The porous zone option is automatically activated for this zone. After the inlet and outlet boundaries, we check the wall boundaries of the electrolyzer. This electrolyzer consists of several internal and external walls. First, we check the external walls corresponding to the electrolyzer terminals. So, we select the anode terminal wall. We must define a specific boundary condition based on voltage or current density for the anode terminal. For this, we use the electric potential to define this boundary condition. So we can use the specified value mode to define the specified voltage, or we can use the specified flux mode to define the specified current density. We assume that the voltage or electric potential is zero on the anode terminal. We consider all scalars, including electric potential and protonic potential equal to zero. We return to the surfaces section. The newly created plane has appeared in this section. We select this plane so that the contour is displayed on it. Then we click on Display. As you can see, the protonic potential contour is displayed in two dimensions. Thank you very much for being with us. I hope you are satisfied with our training. The Mr. CFD Group will always be ready to provide you with training services.